We honestly didn't really want to cover Tesla's Cybercab RoboTaxi this much, because at the end of the day it's still not operating at scale and is currently in the testing phase ahead of mass production, which is expected to begin in April this year. However, Elon Musk has been making a series of eye-catching statements about the vehicle, especially after NVIDIA announced Alpamayo, an AI-powered technology designed to speed up the development of autonomous driving solutions, and a direct competitor to Tesla's FSD. On top of that, the cybercab has now been spotted on highways for the first time. Meanwhile, a more intense issue involving the cybercab has just surfaced. Tesla has run into trouble trying to trademark the name Cybercab. In a worst-case scenario, the new vehicle may no longer be called RoboTaxi or Cybercab at all, and Elon Musk could be forced to come up with a completely new name. That's exactly why we're talking about Cybercab today, so let's dive into the details right now. Before we get started, if you don't like this vehicle, drop a 1 in the comments below, and if you are interested, leave a 2. Alright, 2026 is shaping up to be a make-or-break year for Tesla, as its robo-taxi ambitions enter a critical phase. As Elon Musk said late last year, the Tesla RoboTaxi Cybercab will be the company's second biggest product this year, and Tesla is putting a huge amount of focus on it. The increasing number of Cybercab test vehicles showing up in Austin and San Francisco is clear proof that Tesla is ramping things up. The real breakthrough isn't the number of cars. It's the move toward completely removing human supervision. Tesla is aiming for mass production in April 2026, using an ultra-high-speed production line, with vehicles that have no steering wheel and no pedals. Practical steps, like in-car cleanliness penalty policies, also show that Tesla is already thinking through even the smallest details of real-world commercial operations. Even though Tesla's fleet is still relatively small compared to Waymo, its core advantage lies in building its own vehicles and optimizing hardware costs. Elon Musk believes that keeping human safety supervisors is the biggest barrier to scaling. Once that barrier is removed, Tesla could roll out thousands of vehicles in a very short amount of time. Recently, Elon Musk even claimed that competitors would need many years to catch up to Tesla's self-driving technology. The Tesla CEO said it would take at least another five years before the company starts to feel real pressure from rivals. On X, Elon Musk wrote, the legacy car companies won't design the cameras and AI computers into their cars at scale until several years after that. So, this is maybe a competitive pressure on Tesla in five or six years, but probably longer. This statement came shortly after NVIDIA announced Alpamayo, a technology that uses artificial intelligence to speed up the development of autonomous driving solutions. Since Alpamayo is also heavily focused on AI, many people have started to speculate that it could become a direct competitor to Tesla's FSD, However, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang has spoken positively about FSD and has also clearly pointed out the differences between FSD and Alpamayo. He stated, Tesla's FSD stack is completely world-class. They've been working on it for quite some time. It's world-class not only in the number of miles it's accumulated, but in the way it's designed, the way they do training, data collection, curation, synthetic data generation, and all of their simulation technologies. Of course, the latest generation is end-to-end -end full self-driving, meaning it's one large model trained end-to-end. -end. And so, Elon's AD system is in every way 100% state-of-the-art. I'm really quite impressed by the technology. I have it, and I drive it in our house, and it works incredibly well. Alongside the praise and recognition for Tesla, Jensen Huang also pointed out that NVIDIA's Alpamayo is built on a completely different philosophy compared to Tesla. Instead of developing its own self-driving vehicles, NVIDIA provides a full autonomous driving technology stack for other companies to use. He said, NVIDIA doesn't build self-driving cars. We build the full stack so others can, Huang said, explaining that NVIDIA provides separate systems for training, simulation, and in-vehicle computing, all supported by shared software. The NVIDIA CEO also added that customers can use the platform as much or as little as they need. He emphasized that NVIDIA plans to work with a wide range of companies across the industry, including Tesla on training systems and companies like Waymo, Xpeng, and Neuro on in-vehicle computing. So basically, NVIDIA isn't trying to compete directly with Tesla. Instead, NVIDIA announced that Mercedes-Benz, one of Tesla's competitors, will be the first automaker to adopt its self-driving system. 
Mercedes plans to launch the system on its CLA sedan in the U.S. in the first quarter of 2026. The timing is interesting, since Tesla is also expected to roll out its robo-taxi service at scale this year. Mercedes says the new CLA will be capable of point-to-point -point autonomous driving, but will still require human supervision, which makes it similar to Tesla vehicles equipped with full self-driving. More recently, Tesla's CyberCab Robotaxi was spotted testing on a highway in Austin, Texas for the first time. Unlike low-speed testing in dense urban areas, highway driving pushes the AI much harder, it has to process data at high speeds, merge lanes accurately, and make split-second decisions. Yeah, this honestly looks like something straight out of a video game. CyberCab confidently operating on major highways shows that Tesla is delivering on its promise of a fully autonomous system that requires no human intervention. According to Tesla fans who were on site, the vehicle drove smoothly, maintained safe following distances, and executed lane changes decisively. This is especially significant given CyberCab's ultra-minimalist design. No steering wheel, no pedals, meaning all trust is placed squarely in the AI brain. Ironically, while the technology inside CyberCab appears to be working almost flawlessly, its name has run into a legal issue that's both serious and, frankly, a bit amusing. Tesla a company known for bold moves and long-term vision, has stumbled over something surprisingly basic. It didn't manage to secure the trademark for its own revolutionary product in time. CyberCab was officially unveiled at Tesla's We Robot event in October 2024, marking a major milestone in the company's ambition to build a fully autonomous taxi ecosystem. This wasn't just the launch of a new vehicle. It was a statement about the future of transportation where humans become true passengers rather than drivers. What's hard to believe is that even at the height of that high-profile announcement, Tesla still hadn't completed the trademark registration for the name CyberCab. In the business world, especially for large corporations, this is almost unthinkable. Announcing a product, pouring billions of dollars into R&D, manufacturing and marketing, yet forgetting to legally protect the name is like building a skyscraper and leaving the front door unlocked. And that gap opened the door to a truly awkward and almost comical scenario. A beverage company beat Tesla to the punch. Yeah, just 18 days after CyberCab was unveiled, a company called UniV, a French beverage maker best known for alcoholic hard seltzers, quickly filed a trademark application for the name CyberCab in the US under the transportation category. At first glance, it's hard not to laugh. A company that sells alcoholic drinks is suddenly holding the spot for the name of a cutting-edge autonomous vehicle. But, from a legal standpoint, this is no joke. U.S. trademark law largely follows a first-to-file principle, regardless of a company's size or reputation. When Tesla eventually filed its own application in November 2024, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office USPTO, was required to consider the earlier filings. As a result, Tesla received a provisional refusal for two reasons. The likelihood of confusion with an existing mark and the presence of a prior application with an earlier filing date. On the surface, the story feels almost like a legal sitcom. But for Tesla, the stakes are very real. CyberCab isn't just a name, it's a brand tied directly to Tesla's long-term strategy, its technological identity, and investor confidence. Losing the ability to exclusively use or protect that name could trigger a domino effect. Increased risk of brand copycats, challenges in global marketing, and potentially long, expensive legal battles down the road. What surprised many people even more is that this isn't the first time UniV has crossed paths with Tesla. The company previously held a trademark related to Tesla tequila, which caused similar headaches for Tesla when it launched its own beverage. To a lot of observers, this looks less like coincidence and more like a deliberate trademark holding strategy. Given the situation, we see Tesla as having two realistic options. Either negotiate and pay UniV to withdraw the application, or take the case to court and argue that a beverage company with no real intent to build vehicles shouldn't be allowed to own the CyberCab trademark. That said, knowing Elon Musk's usual playbook, Tesla is far more likely to choose the second route. You know, Tesla isn't exactly known for compromising easily, especially when it comes to matters of principle. A lawsuit could drag on, but it would also allow Tesla to defend its interests and potentially set a legal precedent. Still, 
Most observers agree that this entire mess could have been avoided if Tesla had handled things more professionally from the start. We're also genuinely puzzled by how Tesla let this slip. It's ironic that a company leading the world in AI, batteries, software, and automation would stumble over such a 101 level management mistake. While many small startups with far fewer resources make sure to lock down trademarks before announcing a product, Tesla, a company with over 100,000 employees, somehow let this one fall through the cracks. In the end, this is a reminder that even the biggest and most innovative companies aren't immune to basic errors. Technological breakthroughs can't replace discipline in corporate governance and legal strategy. In an era where brands are incredibly valuable, intangible assets, a name can matter just as much as the product behind it. So for now, CyberCab remains an uncertain name, and if negotiations fail, Elon Musk may be forced to come up with something else entirely. Drop your suggestions for a new name in the comments below. Switching to a few other updates, Tesla Diner has become the latest target of pessimistic rumors. From the very beginning, the diner sparked debate, not because of the food quality, but because expectations were sky-high for a concept that had no real precedent. Some critics were quick to point to photos of a less crowded parking lot, early service hiccups, or the scaling back of certain show elements like Optimus serving popcorn as signs that the project was already losing momentum. But the reality appears to be very different. Sawyer Merritt shared on X that the Tesla diner still had over 30,000 burger orders and 83,000 fries orders in Q4. The diner generated over $1 million in revenue in Q4, a $4 million annual run rate, which is more than the average McDonald's. Okay, what we're seeing here is something pretty normal. Any space built around experience and curiosity goes through a post-hype adjustment phase. Once the initial novelty wears off, visitor numbers naturally settle into a more realistic baseline. That's especially true for a location that's simultaneously a restaurant, a supercharger station, and a brand-driven entertainment destination. Media outlets lumping routine operational adjustments together with Tesla's broader challenges to spin a failure narrative says more about click-driven sensationalism than actual performance. To be fair, Tesla Diner has moved past the loud, festival-like atmosphere of its opening days, but that phase was always temporary and never expected to last. A slowdown in foot traffic doesn't mean decline. In fact, the Diner is still doing exactly what it was designed to do. Boosting supercharger usage, generating steady revenue, and strengthening Tesla's brand presence in one of the most competitive EV markets in the U.S. It's less a struggling restaurant and more a functioning commercial testbed. Meanwhile, we're noticing a quieter but very meaningful shift happening in China. Tesla is rolling out interior upgrades across the entire Model Y lineup, regardless of trim level. Features that were previously exclusive to higher-end versions like Performance or Model YL are now making their way into standard and premium trims, a clear signal that Tesla is redefining what base model really means. Since the launch of the Model YL early last year, that version quickly became the new benchmark for the entire Model Y family. With its longer wheelbase, improved materials, and noticeably better interior experience, the YL unintentionally raised an uncomfortable question. Why don't the other versions meet the same standard? Now Tesla seems to be answering that question through action, gradually pulling the standard models closer to the peak they themselves established. As a result, the once clear hierarchy within China's Model Y lineup is starting to blur. Buyers of the rear-wheel drive version, traditionally seen as the entry-level option, now step into a cabin that feels remarkably similar to the most expensive variant. Visually, in terms of materials and overall spatial feel, the experience remains minimalist yet premium, perfectly aligned with the design philosophy Tesla has pursued since day one. The most noticeable change is right above the driver's head. The light gray headliner, long associated with lower trims and a detail that's been controversial for years, has officially been phased out. In its place is a black Alcantara-style finish that was previously reserved for performance models and so popular that many owners were willing to retrofit it aftermarket. Standardizing the headliner color not only makes the cabin feel more upscale, but also signals Tesla's push to simplify its production line. At the same time, the center display has been upgraded to match higher-end variants. Model Y standard and premium trims now come with a 16-inch touchscreen, replacing the previous 15.4-inch unit. On paper, 
That increase may seem minor, but from inside the car, the difference is immediately noticeable. The larger display area, slimmer bezels, and improved contrast and resolution make the entire interface feel cleaner, more modern, and noticeably more open. More importantly, using a single display across multiple trims isn't just about aesthetics. It reflects Tesla's broader manufacturing philosophy, maximum standardization, fewer unique parts, and greater supply chain efficiency. We wouldn't be surprised if this screen design shows up in future Model 3 updates as part of a wider strategy to unify Tesla's entire product lineup. For now, these upgrades are limited to vehicles rolling out of Giga Shanghai. But if Tesla's past behavior is any indication, this is rarely the final stop. The Shanghai factory often serves as a manufacturing test lab where changes are trialed before being rolled out to Giga Berlin and Giga Texas. As Tesla continues to prioritize efficiency across costs, supply chains, and perceived product value, phasing out older components in favor of a new interior standard makes strategic sense. Once existing parts inventories are exhausted, these upgrades are likely to become global defaults, allowing Tesla to both streamline production and stay competitive in an increasingly cutthroat EV market. Recently, Elon Musk made waves again by talking about the Tesla Roadster with a shockingly blunt statement. Safety is not the primary goal. He went on to say, if safety is your number one priority, don't buy the Roadster, a comment that immediately reignited hype around the long-awaited car. The remark wasn't just bold marketing, it revealed Musk's fundamentally different mindset toward a sports car that's been anticipated for nearly a decade. At a time when Tesla is rapidly pivoting toward robo-taxis and full autonomy, Musk wants to position the Roadster as a kind of final legacy car. He compares it to legendary supercar brands like Ferrari, where buyers prioritize excitement and performance over practical safety features. According to Musk, the Roadster will be the best of the last cars driven by humans. That line suggests that even as the world moves toward automation, Tesla intends to preserve a pure, high-performance machine for those who crave full control behind the wheel. Musk has now officially confirmed that Tesla is targeting a product demo on April 1st, 2026. He joked that choosing April Fool's Day gives him plausible deniability if the event gets delayed again. Still, he insists this will be the most insane demo Tesla has ever done. The Tesla CEO describes the Roadster as a mashup of every James Bond car ever made, packed with technology that goes far beyond today's automotive norms. The biggest highlight remains the SpaceX collaboration package. Musk continues to promise a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of under one second. To hit that almost physics-defying number, the car would use cold gas thrusters. When asked whether the car could actually fly, Elon Musk hinted at the possibility, only adding more fuel to the excitement among fans. Even though the public debut is expected in early 2026, Musk also noted that mass production would begin roughly 12 to 18 months later. That means the first customers, many of whom put down deposits of hundreds of thousands of dollars back in 2017, may not actually get their hands on the steering wheel until 2027. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into CyberCab, hit like, subscribe for more Tesla updates, and let us know your thoughts in the comments below right now today.